So Paulo adapted pretty well to me calling an audible with the scriptures today. (laughs) As I was working on this lesson, I just wasn't happy with the scripture that I had chosen three months ago to go with it. So I threw it out and put another one in there. That's why it said Daniel in your bulletin, but we actually read from Revelations 18. Well, this morning, no more diapers and bows refers to our concept of angels. And I say our, I should have done air quotes, you know, but maybe I'm just talking about mine. Maybe you already have a healthy image of angels in your mind that isn't the little fat boy flying, you know, with non-aerodynamic wings flying around with his little bow, you know, kind of the Cupid crossover that we do even into Christianity. My, uh, My example that I always use for sterile Protestantism, meaning, you know, just dry as toast, Protestant understanding or kind of images is a particular chapel I had in England. It wasn't like this chapel with, or this church with beautiful stained glass and, and you know, it's easy to, to picture heaven in the stained glass of this church, but in this church that we had in England, as radical as it was, was it just had two-tone glass. Uh, most of the glass was this kind of blurry yellow and it had, and I, I know I've got the colors wrong. <laughs> Ask Linda later what the actual colors is. But kind of a, a pinky purple uh, square or rectangle inside the rectangle of yellow uh, blurry uh, stained glass. No images, no Bible verses, nothing. And the chapel originally didn't even have a cross on the wall. But somebody, I guess, since the chapel had been made, over a hundred and some years before, finally said, you know, we ought to have a cross somewhere in the church. So a homemade cross had been attached to the wall. But I thought this sometimes, you know, Protestantism sometimes gets this bleak. We are so worried about not being like some of the denominations that sometimes get accused of idolatry that they made the chapel so sterile. And... You you do have to realize that in England, there had been this pushback against the idolatry of the Church of England. Just a few miles down the road from this bleak chapel was a chapel that had been built about the time of William the Conqueror, you know, in the 11th century. And it had had, and still has to this day, magnificent carved angels in the ceiling. But some of the angels looked like they were shrimpers in New Orleans, you know, or down in the bayou. They were missing ears, like they'd lost them in a knife fight or something. And that's because during the time of the English Civil War, some of the Protestants came in there, some of the the roundheads, and they'd actually fired muskets at the angels because they thought they were idolatrous. and And some of the angels still had musket balls in them from the 1600s. Just amazing. Sometimes we don't know what to do with angels in the the Protestant church, but God gave me this word, and I thought, okay, I've got to talk about angels a little bit. It's not so much a call to worship angels. As you know, that is distinctly forbidden in Scripture. The angels themselves, you know, it happens a couple times in the book of Revelation where John tries to worship the angel that's bringing him the message, and he says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Do not do that. I am a creature the same as you. I was thinking, well, Lord, then what is, what purpose can we have about talking about angels and, and kind of beefing up our impression of angels? Well, because angels are pretty awesome. I know we've all been taught How many times whenever an angel appears, its very first words are, do not be afraid. So clearly, people who encounter angels, the first reaction is fear. At least that's the scripture, you know, the scriptural evidence on behalf of you bump into an angel, you're going to know it because you're going to be afraid. 
if they come in all their glory. But as I thought about this, I thought, yeah, I don't know that I have a high enough impression of angels. And how could I benefit from pumping up my impression of angels, you know, getting that little diapers and bow kid out of my mind and instead think about a God who is surrounded by not just, you know, half a dozen angels, but that's part of the reason I put the original Daniel verse in there is our God is surrounded by 10,000 times 10,000 of these awesome creatures. And how awesome are these creatures? That's why I, I had the Revelation 18 in there, because I had never really thought that angels themselves have a glowing splendor, as you saw there in Revelation 18. As this angel comes down, this angel itself has so much glory or splendor that it literally lights up the ground as it comes down to earth. I'm thinking... I don't know that I've ever thought about angels being that, with that much juice, that much energy, that much power, that when they show up, particularly on this dirt clod, you know, they're stepping out of the eternal, coming down to this place, they can't help but light it up. It's like they, they bring their own searchlight without even having a light. And I thought, I had not thought about that. And then Jesus, when he's trying to give us a reason to hold fast and not deny him, and that's, not, that's easier said than done. It is so easy to deny Christ with just silence that I thought, oh, I had a, an encounter. I was on a plane this week flying from Norfolk, Virginia to Baltimore, and I got I, have, I, I better say it, God sat me by a drunk. And this drunk, and I was so grateful that it was a very short flight from Virginia to, to Maryland. <laughs> this drunk was loud and obnoxious and dropping the F-bomb and expressing all kinds of views. And I... And I'm normally one, I, I, will, I will let that go by, but I realize people are hearing this guy, and I'm sitting next to him, I gotta do something. I'd like to say that I took as many exceptions with what was coming out of his pie hole as he deserved, I didn't. I did take some exception to what he was saying. I know when we stood up at the end of the flight, people were looking at me, they pitied me for having to sit and listen to this guy. But I was thinking, what is God doing looking down? Why wasn't I bolder? Why did I choose the easy way? So it is so easy to deny Christ. And I had to repent and say, yeah, Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't stand for you more. <laughs> I should probably rebuke this guy in the name of Jesus. But anyhow, Jesus says, if you need something to fire you up, think about when he comes, not only in his own glory. And, and so this message isn't about his second coming. But it's thinking about when he comes, that is going to be so awesome, so mind-blowing. Because not only is the Father coming with his glory, but the angels are coming. And I thought, wow, I just kind of picture the tip of the spear having all this power and glory. But no, the, the armies and armies of angels, I thought, I need to pump up how I view heaven. Because it's not just flying with a drunk but we live in some times that you could lose your hope. You could lose your way. If you just think about, you know, turn the newspaper, just bad news, bad news, bad news at levels that I don't remember being this bad this many different ways. It's mind-boggling. You could cower. But I think if we turn our minds to the one who is our God, sits in the presence. He himself is not only so glorious, but he sits amongst 10,000 times 10,000, not little chubby guys with diapers and bows, but these amazingly awesome creatures that the most natural reaction is do not fear. But God's not afraid. 
But if his glory and their glory, it is so awesome. Think about that next time you just feel overwhelmed at the darkness of our times. At something that you're like, oh no, not again. This too. Lord, I already had so much to carry. And then this happened. And then this happened. You can imagine the bachelors. We kind of feel that way these days. Oh Lord, not this too. And so for Glenda and I, we have to say, Wow, the God we serve and the life after this life is full of God and these amazing angels and these creatures that they've never had to do a day in darkness. And that day is coming for us too. So we're so excited that we're going to be amongst these creatures and they're not going to be little guys in diapers and little bows, but just awesome. Well, anyhow. I hope that's a hopeful word to you because it is to me. Let us pray. So, Lord, we realize that you are not intimidated by angels. You are the one that gives them the glory. You created them to be around your throne. You created your throne room to be so bright and full of light and splendor that you made the angels and that you wait for the church and that you're coming for the church with your angels. Let us live in hope, and let us not be afraid. We ask this in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen.